so let's check on the league table after two match days. There are ten in all before the semi-finals. Top four will obviously go through to the semis. Phil Taylor, who's played an extra match than Colin Lloyd, leads by two points. Taylor and Lloyd drew their match 6-6 on the opening night. On each match day, one player has to play twice. And as you can see, Shelton is the other player to have done that so far. Dudbridge will be doing it tonight. And come on at the bottom on Hawaii 501. You need a point soon, Mr. Mardell. Well, here's the man who's top of the table, of course, Phil Taylor. Phil, Mark Dudbridge tonight. Now, at Stoke, you had all the fans behind you. Tonight, nearly everybody in the room seems to be following Mark Dudbridge. Well, why shouldn't they? Yeah, he's a local, oh, I'll say local. That is about 30, 40 miles away. But he's very popular down in these parts. So, uh, yeah, the press is on Mark now. He's no, now we'll know how I felt. <laughs> it's a rerun of the final. He put up a good show, didn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's a great player. He's full of confidence. This is how you finished. Yeah. These are your last three darts. Oh yeah, I remember now. You said I'd remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one. And, and the double, of course, to yeah, finish it all yeah, off. Yeah. And the referee, Russ Bray. Oh, he wasn't expecting that, was he? <laughs> That's probably why he's got a deep voice. Oh, it's massive for me that that was. That was yeah. like a, a real big, big win for me. And Dudbridge? Oh, um, fantastic. I mean, you know, I was very worried about Mark in, in the day. Naturally, he played well all week and... Uh, he was the man to beat that week. It's hard for him tonight, even in front of his own fans, when he plays the world's number one and the world's number two. Uh, it doesn't matter who we play tonight. You're playing in front of your home crowd. Yeah. And it's hard. It's not like football where you play every two weeks. This is a one-off. You know what I mean? We bought, we've actually, instead of people travelling now to see us, we're bringing darts to them. It's and fantastic. It's, and how do you I think, think the league's is. going? It's good for me. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's brilliant. I think Wayne's, uh, Wayne needs a few points. I've got more points on my driving license than he has at the moment. But okay. And, uh, and finally, a word about your big 7-1 win over Andy Fordham in the Master of Darts at the weekend. Yeah, that was in a Holland. That, yeah, brilliant win. I mean, even better was beating John Pollard. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you beat so many, you can't remember. Yeah, uh, uh, Raven Barneville. Never yeah. like John Pollard wasn't even there. Ray Barneville. And uh, that was a massive win for me. But yeah, the, the prize money was 150,000 for the okay. winner. So that was even better. Okay. Listen, Phil, you've got a long wait, but I know you want to get back to the dartboard, yeah. get practicing. That's to be honest with these lads now, it's not such a long wait anymore. They, right. You know, 12 legs is well, like whoosh. Even more reason why you better get on the practice yeah, board thank just you. to shut up. Thank Thanks you. a lot. See you a bit later this evening. Will do. Thanks a lot, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. So, our first match underway in just a few moments. The world number two, Colin Lloyd, against the new kid on the block, the local boy. What a reception he's going to get, Mark Dudbridge. So, before the MC, Phil Jones takes his place to officially introduce the two players, let's get a few facts on the flash. Kid on the block, an exciting youngster, and they're wild for him in this region, Mark Dudbridge. That match coming up after Phil Jones has made the official announcement. But first of all, let's remind you what the flash is all about. Would you please welcome back for our final game of the evening from Bristol and from Rock Chapel, former World Masters champion, the Flash, Mark Dutchbridge.
ladies and gentlemen, 12 times World Dust Champion, the master of disaster, Bill the Power up of the Premier League so far. Sit tight. This may match made to measure for our commentators Sid Waddell and Dave Lanning. And there's always a power charge thrill of anticipation when Philip Taylor walks into a darts arena anywhere in the world. And I think tonight Sid, it has to be said, with Dudbridge on home ground, that was probably the most indifferent reception that Philip Taylor has received on a British Darts Arena. Absolutely. And the odds very much with Taylor. I think it's seven to two against Goodbridge winning. And nine will get you one in four on a Taylor win. And take it from me. There's a rumor that Taylor has been asked by a source firm to change his name by default to Phil Ketchup. But take it from me. There could be red liquid up there tonight. Coming from the veins of Dudbridge. Taylor's in the mean mode. He did for Barney Bell in Fordham in Holland. And his average against Barney Bell at a 7 6 was 115. This kid's only mortal, Dave. He's averaging 92. He's going to take his average up to nearly 110 in the next 40 odd minutes to do anything with the power. Well, it's not a question of catch-up, more of catch-up for all Phil Taylor's rivals on top of the lead. He'll be looking to extend that lead in this match. But can Dudbridge find some terrific darts? And there's Jack Russell, boring keeper, who did this portrait of Phil Hayes, a professional artist now presented it earlier this evening. And it is a very impressive work, Sid. And he got the eyes dead right. He said, Sid, they're the eyes of a predator. With him in the famous Eddie Norman. One of the founders of British darts in the hey, 70s. A proud Bristolian. Let's see how Rupert. this Bristolian the handles the player. power in a yeah. maelstrom. A miasma of God and enthusiasm. Well, Phil Taylor has been averaging 110.2 in his first nine darts in this tournament. He normally comes steaming in. Dead right. And what he set out to do in Reading two weeks ago was to whitewash Roland Shelton. 100. 12 nil. Because he's that sort of lad. You can see the difference in the averages per match and tournament very early sample for the match of course and this won't do Mark Dubbridge's figures any harm at all a reenactment 